Hey guys, welcome back. Um, someone wanted a little walk around of my car, so we're doing that today, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank God that the brothers on the rise now. Endless celebrations all in my house. Yeah. Levitating now, I'm super duper fly now. Yeah. London boy, but they see where I reside now. Put the time in while you always yelling time out. Yeah. And quit it, cause I know I'm coming with it. You were sitting, you were wishing I was handling my business. Yeah. Now I got the ball like Harry Potter playing Quidditch. And my business is humongous, you would think that happens in there. Damn man, I'm all that, yeah, I'm all that. I'm all Working that. for that whip, yeah, that what you call that. So to begin I will just start with the front of the car and work my way to the back of the car. Um, overall it's a pretty simple car, uh, power wise it's stuck and yeah let's go. So as you can see I installed some awesome hood pins because you really need them. And underneath is the stock engine. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, since I removed like all the headlights, the folding headlights and stuff, I was able to just uh, take my intake and flip it around and put it basically where the uh, front left headlight was before. Um, that probably doesn't gain any power but I thought why not it's uh, much better than having it right above the uh, manifold anyways so yeah other than that there's not really much to talk about in the engine bay here um, I installed some LED headlights um, pretty simply just wired them into the old harness and yeah besides that yeah, I got an eBay cone filter as if 100 horsepower was too much I bought an air filter so I would have a bit less but nicer sound. Um, as you can also see it's pretty dirty from the inside I probably should clean it at some point. And one other thing I did actually remove the heater core from the car so that's why I have this blue hose here. That's a silicon hose. Um, yeah this was where usually the heater core would go and then I just looped it back into the heating system. So it doesn't spill water everywhere. Pretty obvious. And yeah, show you a little pick of the hood pin install here. Pretty straightforward, I guess. And also then there in the back, you can also see the kill switch that I had to run for the competition that I took part in. And yeah. Other than that, I stripped the hood, like I removed all the inner structures of it. Now it's pretty wobbly, so I don't know if I would really recommend it, because actually you couldn't save that much weight. And as you can see here, I also made some brackets uh, for the headlight covers, so it would look cool. Um, I riveted them in. Uh, it was the easiest way to do it, I think. Um, some people also glued it, but... Yeah, I had the riveting gun at home anyways, so I thought that would be a nice idea. And also, yeah, show you the LED headlights a bit more. Um, I just bolted them pretty simply. I should probably redo it at some point because they're sticking out a little bit. So you can see from this side here, I would like them to go a bit further in. But, uh, yeah. I really needed to get the car ready for the event last time and I had enough to do as it was already so I didn't really do that then. And yeah, also tinted my blinkers in a nice yellow and got my FIA uh, toe strap um, that's just mounted to where the old steel toe strap was and yeah, this was also needed for the competition. And then you can see the garage, very eBay edition, fake edition, that's currently right now held on by uh, zip ties because, yeah, it fell off because I hit a tire or something. And that's why it's not really looking so nice right now. The car is very dirty. I didn't get a chance to clean it up yet. 
But there's not really a point in doing it because I'm going to another drift day and it's a wet drift day so the car will get very dirty. Okay, on to the next part, uh, my rims. These are just some, I don't even know what brand, I think they, it says Viking or something on them. And I painted them gold. Uh, it was a very shiny gold, right now you can't see it because it's dirty. But the problem with this paint was you can clear coat it, so I don't know if you can see that. But it's, yeah, it's not the nicest looking right now. So I probably have to redo it at some point. Uh, inside here you can also see I'm running a 25 millimeter spacer. It doesn't really have any function, I'm just doing it so it looks a bit nicer. And then also you can see here my flared and pulled fenders from last time. If you watched the last video, um, I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen it and you're interested in that. Um, looks like I fucked it up quite a bit. But, to be honest, I don't think it was necessarily my fault. Um, I crashed this car before, like this panel, and I just put a lot of Bondo on it and stuff, and I think when I was, uh, and I think when I was rolling the fenders, actually some stress of the um, fender got released or something, and then it just basically uh, folded right here. So, yeah, not so nice, but the back looks much nicer. Yeah, other than that, um, running a hard top with with a little bit of a ghetto mounting system um, that's actually what the cage builder had done I don't really like it 100% but it works so yeah also of course all the nice stickers so I can actually get some power in this thing and kill switch my name on it because extra horsepower sticker of our sponsor raceguitar.de um, if you're in Germany and you're in need of some products uh, check them out they're pretty nice and been very helpful uh, for me and my uh, team so yeah on to the back uh, basically the same thing I think I run a 25 millimeter spacer here as well also check my pulled fenders out Fidman is not great right now because I'm actually running my uh, wheels with a less offset. I think these are like um, ET37 or something, I'm not really sure. And the other ones are ET27. So if I run the gold wheels it looks a bit nicer, but for now this will have to do. Okay, on to the back. Also, saw some hook pins here uh, because I stripped down the whole bonnet and at least a little springs to hold it down. And then let me just get it. So yeah, same thing as same thing as the hood. I just stripped it all down, uh, cut away all the inner structures, and then put some hood pins on it because weight saving. Um, probably this hasn't done that much, anyways. But I thought, why not? I was just at it doing it, so. I didn't think it would hurt. Yeah, here I still have some. Uh, here I still have some tools in the car from the last event. Uh, yeah, but nothing special going on here. Battery located a little bit differently from stock. Hood pins. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, okay, and I almost forgot, I'm also running the KG Works uh, back spoiler ducktail thing. I think it looks quite nice. Uh, not sure if I like it in gray as well. Maybe I'll paint it again in uh, black, but who knows. So also what I did when I was like building this car this uh, spring, um, we put a Lexan uh, windows in it, uh, mainly the back window, and the side windows, uh, side driver windows. Um, just again, I thought I could save some weight there. In the end I don't think it makes a notable difference, but as I said, I was at it anyway, so why not do it?
Um, the way we did this is just basically I made up a template of the old window with some cardboard, and then cut out the Lexan, um, and then, yeah, me and a friend, we started bolting it on one side and then just trying to make it fit everywhere. Um, took quite long. The problem was, uh, as I was getting out the old window, or I wanted to get out the old window, and the problem was it uh, actually burst midway. So I spent like one hour trying to get the sealant from the window to make it yeah, come out very easily. And then in the end it just broke. And so I didn't have anything to make a template of, so it was a bit difficult. But I think it turned out okay in the end. I mean, it's not the nicest if you look at this kind of stuff. We could have done a better job, I think. But, yeah, like this is a car, you have to be like five meters or a few yards away, and then it looks cool. If you're very close, you can see it's not the nicest. But it's okay, it's my drift car, so doesn't need to be that cool. Okay, then on to the interior. Oh yeah, and also note, like these are the Lexan windows I was talking about. Uh, it didn't really turn out perfect. I had some trouble forming the Lexan. And yeah, I got a bit impatient here. And then um, it turned out this way. It doesn't close all the way. So when it rains and I'm standing still, it's not very nice. Uh, you will get a bit wet. But it's fine. Um, the car is in the garage most of the time anyways. And yeah, it's fine. Okay, on to the interior. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I think the most special thing about the whole car is probably the cage. Uh, it was made by THG Driftschmiede, it's a workshop here in Germany. Uh, Thomas Große, uh, the Highlander, built it. Uh, he did a quite nice job, I think. And yeah, also, if you're interested, maybe check him out um, on Facebook or something. He builds very nice cages. Uh, he actually has a AE86 with a 1JZ. Uh, that makes like 500 horsepower, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we got the NASCAR style door bars here that I really wanted because I think they look cool and they offer some good protection if someone was to run into my door. Um, the whole reason I got the cage uh, was not really because I wanted it, but because I needed it in order to run competition, which was my goal for this year. Um, yeah, was it the right decision? I don't know right now. Uh, maybe I would have done some things differently in the end, but maybe I'll talk about stuff like this in another video. Uh, to complement the cage, I cut out the uh, doors here. Um, I thought I could save some weight again, but yeah. And also gives a bit more room for the cage to actually go into the door. I will probably cut this out at some point in the future, because it's just not needed anymore, because this Mucho stronger than this. Yeah, uh, maybe someone's interested in how I mounted my Lexan windows. Again, I made up some like brackets. I don't know if you can see here. And basically, it's just like a U shape, and then I bolted the Lexan window to the one side and bolted the other side to the door here. It's not perfect, but so far it's holding up focus. It's not perfect, but so far it's holding up, uh, so good enough for me. Oh, also the way that I made the Lexan windows, I just took the old windows out, uh, made a template, and then I, with like a heat gun, I started forming it to the same uh, shape as the original windows, which, as I said before, didn't turn out so great. If you can see this, focus, camera, focus, yeah, anyways, this stuff happens if you heat it up for too long and you don't pay attention. Uh, yeah, this is still the normal glass. At some point I might uh, change it as well, but the weight saving on there is like not that great. I can also go poop before I take a drive, and that's probably the same thing. So I don't know. 
give you some more shots of the cage here. Also something I noticed, uh, we have this uh, A-strut support. Um, I think in the United States it's not, it's not necessary. Also we need to have this roof support. Um, it's the FIA rules uh, for the cage, so yeah. I thought it was interesting because I think in the United States you don't really need to have it. And I know that you don't need to have the um, A-strut support, so that was kind of interesting. Okay. And then, also I made up like a little panel here um, for the starter of the car. Yeah, this doesn't really do anything right now, but I will later on wire it to the second fan on the radiator. So to have a bit more cooling. Yeah, other than that you can see the kill switch there again. Um, well, pretty straightforward, just mounted with this like pipe mounting stuff. Also no dash. Um, yeah, little fire extinguisher here because rules. And what else? Yeah, I mean I'm running two I'm running two Sparker Sprints in here uh, with both uh, six-point harnesses from uh, Zandler. It's a German company that sells racing stuff and they also make their own harnesses. Or they, add, they don't produce them but like they get their logo on it. And this was the cheapest option. Also, if you're in Europe or in Germany, check them out. Nice store and good service as well. And yeah, actually this is a, this is an old Sparkle Sprint and they didn't have the cutout for the six point harness so what I ended up doing is just cut a hole through it basically and uh, yeah, this is like that. And then I'm also on the passenger side I'm running the normal mounting brackets uh, and like I'm, I made adapter plates for the normal mounting brackets to for so that the sparkle sprints would fit on. If you have any questions on that, just ask me. Uh, yeah, okay, coming back to this side. A little shot again of the interior. So here I got my nice nerdy wheel. It's a deep corn uh, suede. Oh, someone's fast. Whee. Nice sound. Not. Okay, so as I was saying, I got my Nardi deep dish. It's 350 millimeter. And uh, yeah, I also got a NRG quick release hub. It's the slim version. Um, yeah, just so that it wouldn't be too close to my body because with the deep corn and the, uh, the quick release hub, it can get a bit uncomfortable. So I'm glad I got that. I mounted all the instruments directly to the cage. And yeah, my neighbor is loud right now. Bye bye. Okay, uh, yeah, what else? I don't know if you have any questions. I don't really know what to talk about anymore. I uh, got my custom shift knob here as well. Um, actually, I was able to do this during an internship a few years ago. And, yeah. I mean, that's basically it. It's a pretty basic car, except for the cage. Um, no. Also, for suspension, I'm running very cheap eBay coilovers. Uh, you can't see them right now. But they do the trick fine uh, so far. I would like, of course, to upgrade at some point but so far it's been good to me and I also got a weld diff that you can't see here right now um, it's just the cheapest option to go drifting so that's why I did that I mean like clutches like clutch type diffs are like 1900 or something uh, so why would I buy that if I can just get it welded for a few bucks and then it's fine and yeah if you have any questions about the car about me or whatever just leave it in the comment section 
I will be doing another video probably on what I'm planning on doing with a car in the future. Um, yeah, so hit the like button, subscribe, and see you next time. Also, I forgot uh, to tell you I'm also not running power steering anymore in this car. Um, I looped the line, so if you don't know what that means, just maybe go on YouTube and uh, search for it. I think Greg Peters made a nice tutorial on how to do that actually, so if you're interested in that, uh, just go on his channel and check it out. Why I did that was pretty much uh, because I also added some steering rack spacers. Forgot to mention that as well. <laughs> um, the power steering pump is having a really hard time with those uh, with the extra load on the steering basically, and it would just spill out uh, the power steering fluid all the time. Also, I thought it would be a nice idea to not have power steering to have maybe a nicer feel in the steering wheel. Um, I don't know if I would do it again, but it like when driving it feels very nice, also when drifting. But the thing is, when you have to park the car or when you're doing some slow speed stuff, it can get very, very exhausting and I actually already had the problem on some events that go for two or three days that on the second days my arms were just hurting a lot. So, I don't know if I can really recommend it. Uh, you can also just mount a power steering cooler uh, when you're running uh, increased lock on the wheels. But yeah, that's just the way I did it, and now I have to live with it, and it's it's okay. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.